This is a mock interview conducted by Forum IS Academy at New Delhi. The interview panel includes eminent academicians, retired bureaucrats, and other luminaries. The objective of program is to acquaint the candidate with the format and expectations of the personality test conducted by UPSC. So Ajay, you are a doctor, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So Ajay, in Rajasthan, uh, Raja, the uh, government of Rajasthan, it has taken a very significant step uh, in the healthcare sector. So it has enacted a right to health. Right. A right to health bill has been passed. Now, uh, some of the associations of doctors they were protesting against this move also. Was there a protest by a group of doctors? Uh, very sorry, sir. Can I repeat the last part of the question? Yeah, I'm asking that why was there a protest from a group of doctors? Yes, sir. Uh, so, sir, this group of doctors mostly included private sector doctors, and yes. the point of contention was in the bill it, it says that they have to provide the services emergency services free of cost to the patient and bill doesn't mention the mechanism of compensation to them so they say it violates their article 19 g which says the freedom of occupation and to do trade and business in the country this was the main reason of contention another one was uh, regarding uh, another lack of clarity where it says it is compulsory for doctor to admit a patient and they cannot refuse a patient who comes in emergency now this is equally compulsory for all but uh, a single specialty for example an ophthalmologist is concerned how will you treat a gynae case if it comes to his hospital and the hospital is not multi specialty these are the two major concerns sir. okay okay so what is your opinion on this issue should uh, the private uh, hospitals or the private nursing homes should they also be included under this uh, bill as it is as present or it needs some changes sure. i feel sir the right to health itself is a visionary move and long overdue so that has to be achieved we mm. just have to bring in more clarity in terms of implementation and the government mm. is also insisting on a further rules to follow up once mm. we have clarity how the do private doctors will be compensated and how the multi-speciality and speciality distinction will be maintained, I think things will become much more smooth. Okay, okay, that's good. So, uh, Ajay, from your DAP, I can see that you are undergoing your training in RPF, right? Uh, no, sir, uh, that was previous CSE RPF. After that, I have switched to IPS because in last civil services, I got 114 rank and allotted okay. IPS. Okay, okay. So, congratulations for that. You have got Thank IPS. you so much, sir. So, are you undergoing your training or you are on EOL now? I have taken extraordinary leave, sir. Okay, you have taken leave. Fine. So, you come from uh, Rajasthan, Ajay, and yes, uh, uh, Jaipur. Tell me something that when it comes to Rajasthan, uh, what is the present incidence of child marriage across various districts in Rajasthan? Is it ha is the trend reducing? Uh, is there an improvement um, in the statistics? What is the present status? Yes, sir. As per the, I think the crime records data or the uh, data of the state government. What is the present status? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, as per the latest NFHS survey. It says 26% mm -hmm. is the prevalence of child marriage in uh, Rajasthan. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is a very high number if seen in isolation. Uh, but mm -hmm. when we see previous NFHS survey 4 and 3, we see the mm -hmm. last survey 5 years back, it was 37%. So a 10% decline in child marriage incidence, which is encouraging and which encourages mm -hmm. us to do more on this regard. Okay, okay. Uh, Ajay, tell me that uh, recently the the government of Rajasthan, it has decided to create 19 new districts 
which takes the number of districts to the in the state to around 50 i think right yes so what do you think is the reason for creating new districts because already in uh, rajasthan districts were uh, classified i think maybe some creation of districts was required in the desert area because they were very large districts like jaisalmer barmer sri gangnagar some districts could have been created there but was it needed to create so uh, many districts what is your understanding sir i feel creation of more districts certainly gives advantage in terms of accessibility of the population to administration their voices can be heard the grip of administration on the area increases and a good governance can be ensured but in achieving this the transition is an expensive exercise and there can be some hiccups in that so i feel a drastic number of 19 uh, should have been done in a more gradual manner so that the finances could have been met and a more objective criterion could be laid down for the same okay okay fine so uh, ache uh, this year the uh, assembly elections are also scheduled in rajasthan right so yes, in sir. your understanding what are the prominent social issues that you know the people of the state are looking forward uh, towards the candidates to resolve yeah as per your understanding what are those important social issues one of the issue uh, which comes from geography affects mm. society in multiple times is the lack of water supply now mm. it forces uh, a, ch- a girl child to fetch water it reduces their education percentage and it then forces them to early child marriage so all of them is linked to lack of availability of water in this region this mm. is a prominent issue okay uh, another issue is the uh, as highlighted by the right to health the, the accessibility of healthcare setup to the population mm-hmm. because there are problems more genuine to this region for example fluorosis silicosis so we need more comprehensive solution because out of pocket mm-hmm. expenditure is already high uh, apart from it uh, sir the literacy is also another issue because we have mm-hmm. seen a huge demand of new mahatma gandhi education school so people really want somebody who can tackle the low literacy level of 66% in rajasthan these are the few issues i think are prominent okay that's very good as if you mention about water availability right uh, so yes, uh, what is the present coverage of the jal jeevan mission in rajasthan how many districts have been completely covered under it uh, very sorry sir i have don't have the exact data but i have uh, i have the information of jal shakti minister's uh, speech where he said rajasthan particularly lags behind In, in implementation of jal jeevan mission so we are and the bottom of the ladder in this but i don't have exact data okay 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 thank you thank you ajay i'll hand over to chairman sir sir thank you please. so much sir i i see you have a lovely career now from uh, uh, you have gone to the police indian police service so is a very good career thank and uh, mm, uh, we have already the, uh, has some questions on on uh, the your career as a doctor of course we need so many doctors uh, but uh, here in the administrative service probably you have a vision to do something <coughs> something different <coughs> now recently uh, i didn't let us not go to incidents let me ask something about yourself during your work anywhere have you ever felt any any ethical dilemmas Yes sir uh, I think uh, at multiple instances I have felt uh, this problem uh, can you one, describe any problem and how did you deal with them with that uh, yes sir one was uh, to tell patient whether to continue treatment or not because i remember a terminally ill patient where we knew the outcomes would be very difficult but the patient was insisting that i want to invest my whole life saving now this is a problem because we are not god we don't know the final outcome but this is ethically dicey to tell him what to do uh, should he continue or should he take the patient home so this is one I, i felt most emotionally turmoiled in this situation and did he agree with your suggestion or he didn't he agreed with the suggestion sir he was uh, sad but i think he agreed he went with the wisdom of my senior doctors who prescribed this 
Any any other thing you would like to tell about yourself, which shows your suitability to see the civil service? So I come from a medical background, uh, but here not just medicine. I have learned the importance of each breath of human life. I've seen patient dying in front of me. I understand how much it value. So I feel this will be the thing which will motivate to, me to work in most of the adverse challenges because I know what a single step taken wrong can cost somebody's breath. So I think I come with this unique dedication for this job. Beyond it, my specialization can, I feel, certainly add flavor to the administration and handle situations like uh, disasters like COVID, which came new, and in other fields also, be it resource management, my expertise of trials can become handy. Also, my hobbies like debating and my leadership positions, which I have enjoyed, uh, be it literary secretary, editor, I think I can, I bring this kind of experience to the table and with the guidance of the right kind of people like senior CEO, I'll certainly add something to the country. So. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you mentioned debating. Let me, let me pose a question to you. Uh, Rajasthan government recently uh, uh, said right to, right to health. Yes. And law passed right to education. And you know the fate of the law in terms of Now, uh, as a debater, I would like you to tell at least three, four points in favor of the law and three, four points against the law. Right to health. Uh, can you, uh, sir, repeat the question because I had some network uh, interruption in between. Now, the issue, issue is, as a debater, a question has been given that whether the right to health is the right thing to do at this moment uh, in the country, keeping in view the infrastructure and other uh, facilities and ground realities. You have to speak three or four points in favor and three or four points against as a debater. Uh, sir, uh, first I would like to propose my stand for the motion for right to health. I feel right to health is an essential right and it told by Supreme Court in its judgment in 1996, it is essential part of Article 21, which is right to life. Because without right to health, there is no right to life. Second, as per Article 47 of DPSP, it is state's responsibility to step in and fill the lacuna of providing health care to all. And in current situation, more than 50% of the expenditure comes from out-of-pocket expenditure in Rajasthan and it becomes too heavy for poor people who are excluded from healthcare. And exclusion from healthcare is exclusion from society, exclusion from life, and this degrades the meaning of life for that person. So I think right to health will provides the just justification for this. And also one very new provision that is providing free services to emergency uh, uh, patients is very important for providing the golden art treatment, be it private hospital or public hospital, saving life is privacy. Also, Can you say something, some, something against it all? Yes, sir. I'd like to propose my motion against the right to health bill. In right to health bill, it has left a vague and open discretion of providing free treatment. It doesn't justify who is supposed to pay for the treatment. If you bring a bill without mentioning who is supposed to pay, you make the profession of private hospitals un uh, uneconomical. After one year or so, without money, they'll run out of doctors, and without doctors, there is no health care for, for anyone at all. So there is a need to ensure sustainability of profession and at the same time, delivery of services. And you cannot just ask for delivery of services and you can go on killing a profession. Second, there have been entry cases which have been missed, for example. It says that you cannot refuse treatment to one. But what if you don't have the specialty for it? A gynec patient comes to an ophthalmologist. Now you certainly cannot force him to do a treatment. Without entry cases, it is just pushing on a bulldozer or something, and we cannot reap really good outcome for it. So there is a need to go into entry cases and correct and bring in right vision for it. This is my excellent. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Now, you, you might have heard that the UN is discussing water these days. And there are a number of uh, people in uh, even US, uh, water barons are coming up. You know, they are, they are buying water bodies and then supplying water. 
in view of this water is going to be a real problem uh, and it is even more in rajasthan so suppose you are a, you are a, you are a collector or a, say a planning secretary in rajasthan uh, how to pl try to plan uh, this particular uh, field sector so that the problem really is nipped in the bud itself if people don't have to suffer sir in this manner i feel the dictum learn from the past becomes very important because rajasthan has a history of having baudis tankas an excellent rainwater harvesting system and it's like preserving the heavenly water and which reduces all the problems this will be my first focus of it and second i have personally worked as a research ex uh, explorer in the fields of rajasthan and realized the problems like fluorosis high level of nitrate uranium still persists in the water ground water especially so we need to plan a measure either we are able to cut down on the high concentration we can go for defluoridation plants but this is expensive exercise so by that time that takes place we can coordinate for a larger supply projects for example there is indira gandhi canal all we need to do is better war bandi and lining system to ensure water is distributed equally and at the same time the rain water system can continue i think these will be my steps to tackle the problem so you both both the solution that you told are surface water related solutions yes sir is there anything in ground water also that you can think of yes sir uh, sir for ground water there is one scheme which is going on is like for example defluoridation plants are where they use activated lm or modern ro system run by solar power because rajasthan has abundance of solar power and renewable energy so that can be used to harvest high quality water but i keep this low in priority because more, even the best of ro system produce a kind of concentrated sludge which has negative implications on the environment and anxiety was once in favor of banning these kind of system so certainly they can be a short term measure but for long sustenance we have to think beyond okay tell me one thing in recently the uh, there have been um, rains here and uh, and uh, people say the crops wheat crops would be affected by that and then all of a sudden in february it became very hot so they said the grain will be shriveled and it will the crop will go yield will go down by about 25% and the situation the farmers must be really under strain what are the what are the suggestions you would like to make so that make so that their conditions is they don't suffer beyond a point the concern is very serious though it has subsided because of western disturbances now but early heat issue is coming again and again in this light icmr provided one of the best solutions they provided a heat tolerant variety of wheat so which can stand early increase in temperature in february i think this is one of the finest solution to tackle this kind of problem that's the future that's for future crops i'm talking about the for the present farmers for the present so for present time we can include as many farmers as we can in insurance scheme so even if the yield goes down farmer is not thrown out of production by a loss on or having a economic impact because of loss of production uh, second uh, government can again build on its buffer grain so that it can control the prices if there is a inflation because of immediate weather disrupt or disruptions of crop these are the solutions i can think of uh, how the uh, the uh, the prices minimum support price is calculated in india today and what was the recommendation of the ms swami nathan committee sir currently the msp pride is suggested by cacp committee and this goes into looking at multiple factors for example the input of the farm labor on the land uh, which goes into production uh, and the the actual rented cost of the land uh, which is used for this production and other factors for example other alternative crops and the prevailing prices in the market are taken into account rental cost is also included in the fair price, uh, the minimum support price land rent cost price i may be wrong sir but this is what i recall that currently going for rent prices that was ms not... committee that was ms swaminathan committee yes, that is been okay yes, now my a little bit about our neighbors uh, china has brokered a peace between uh, iran and um, saudi arabia yes sir. and the two countries were were real enemies what do you think will have impact on west asia politics uh, this particular peace 
deal. Sir, it, it is a big breakthrough uh, looking at the seven years impasse of relation between these two countries and particularly chi increasing Chinese influence and declining US influence in this region can raise certain issues. For example, India was going ahead with I2U2 partnership in the region. Now this space is challenged because of uh, this change in geopolitical situation. Uh, second, because of growing access between Russia, China, maybe Pakistan, Iran, I don't know how it will fold out, but because of increased US pressure, there might be an access creating. So this might complicate yeah, but the West Asia issue. West, about the West Asia issue. There are so many countries which may be affected by this deal. Which are the countries in the mind? Yes. Which may be yeah. affected? Uh, first comes to me is Israel, which has immediate impact on it and uh, its policies gets affected. Other neighboring countries will also face a brunt, uh, be it the influence on UAE, Bahrain, uh, Oman, other friendly countries to India because of this increasing Chinese influence and Chinese pressure on these countries. Saudi Arabia is directly in fight against Yemenis. Don't you think that will have, and the Yemenis are supported by, by Iranians. Don't you think that will make a difference? I think uh, there, there is a possibility of, uh, because the ceasefire is already lasting in Yemen, so there's a possibility of conclusion of war because if the proxy fighting between Iran and Saudi Arabia ceases in Yemen, so we might see peace there. And in Lebanon and other countries also Iran has been supporting, will that also make a difference? Uh, sir, we should be cautiously optimistic. Yes, on face it appears, uh, but there are more hardline differences. Tell me, tell me another differences. Tell me, tell me another thing. Uh, China took a lead and got it done. We had better relation with Iran and Saudi Arabia. Do you think we lost out? Missed the bus? You could have done it earlier than Chinese did. India had excellent relationship uh, with these countries, but uh, off late because of US sanction and India following the suit with Iran in case of Iran. Uh, we have seen a downtick in the relationship because our uh, Chabar, Chabar port, which India built on Iran, is yet not fully functional. And the growing Chinese influence uh, has had 400 billion uh, loans. But you don't, think, you don't think India missed the opportunity to become a leader in this uh, particular initiative? I think, yes, sir, it's a setback for now. But I okay. feel it is a thing now, for bigger bargain. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Now there is another war going on. Yes, sir. Can we be, can we have uh, our say? Because again, Chinese are visiting Russia and people are uh, trying to uh, do some, make some uh, difference in the war. Should India also participate in that? Because India also has relation with both the countries here. I feel, sir, in this regard, India can and should definitely try to be a uh, peacemaker uh, because there are experts who, uh, I mean, doubt Chinese opinion or the Chinese real intention of peace. They feel China is getting more benefit in war and it may not seek an early peace. The condition will never be put. But a country like India, which has good relationship with both Russia and Ukraine and with absolutely zero interest except for ending a war, can be a very suitable mandator and will be respected across the board, sir. So I think India can take a lead in this initiative. Can or should? So both, sir. India can also with its capacity and it should also because of its intent to be next wish. Good. There is a lot of talk about Indian democracy, the quality of democracy in India. Uh, uh, well, I'm not going to in, uh, in, into those details, but as a police officer, I, at present you are in police, isn't it? As a police officer, suppose you are in ED or any any CBI or any organization like that, and uh, sort of some politician says he's my enemy and book him somewhere in some false case. How would you react? So the answer will be an absolute no. But if some opposition politician has a case going on which he has done some crime, I'll proceed with the rule of law. Uh, because, no, he's not uh, done any crime. He just said he's an enemy and just put him somewhere. Fabricate a case and put him behind the bars. So that, that is putting a spade on your own leg, sir. Because even if I hear two politicians' word, that will be detrimental for myself and for that politician and for the country. So a such action will be very short term also because I trust judiciary will intervene one day or the other 
and the case will fall flat without anything okay okay thank you thank you very much yes hello ajay can you hear me hello sir yes sir all right uh, so a lot of controversy has been brewing in punjab are you aware of the issue yes sir my question is what do you think are the long term implications of this whole uh, uh, issue going on long term implications sir on long term i feel it refreshes the memory of uh, the khalistan movement which which would uh, which was had subsided from the state uh, it increases a fissure line and can bring in discontentment uh, discontentment in this society and at the same time can be exploited by our an opportunistic neighbor who wants Uh, to create trouble in the country so these can be a uh, long term negative consequences but it will depend on the capacity of leadership to include the public in the indian identity and to prevent so, self hits so, so if if you are to suggest a few measures uh, on how to tackle with the immediate threat along with making sure that the society is carried along and no tension is brewed so what are the solutions which uh, would you provide so i like to work on three principal elements here uh, first i like to focus on increasing the capacity building of youth increasing their jobs and their employability because a free and educated mind is the biggest home for radicalization this is my personal belief my second focus will be in bringing the right ideas of religion because if we read the texts of sikhism it promotes equality and brotherhood to all and it never talks about separating the country or fighting in the name of religion and we have a very strong history of bonhomie in the country and the ideas of secularism in indian freedom movement i okay. think these have to be taken to the populace what do you think Third, about the cause of uh, the police uh, in capturing the main accused uh, why weren't they able to capture uh, capture him sir i don't have access to the exact reason but on face it appears to be an intelligence failure and some some slippage uh, in the uh, thing okay okay uh, so nsa has been invoked right yes sir what what is uh, the uh, uh, what is the nsa what are the provisions nsa is a, a preventive retention law sir uh, it says that those elements which can create disturbance in law and order and can be detrimental to the security of the country can be withheld for 2 months pending a approval by a committee which comprises of three judicial members or bureaucrats and uh, and this is done to pr- prevent the unity of the country or security of the state and and a few years uh, back a uh, few amendments were done in the nsa act are you aware of uh, the changes done uh, very sorry sir i don't recall exactly which change you are referring to all right and do you think the recent uh, fiasco in uh, uk will uh, lead to some strain in the uh, india uk relations on longer terms i think no sir our bond with uk has its own strength be it economic partnership the need for fi- uh, tackling the peace in indo pacific or climate change all the things stands but yes on short term it might bring focus to providing security to our diplomats and their diplomats within the capital so that such small miscreant acts doesn't occur regularly all right all right so one of uh, the members of the parliament went abroad and uh, and criticized the democracy in india um do you think that this calls for exempting him on the grounds of uh, giving freedom of speech and expression or do you think there lies some responsibility that he should not uh, he should have taken care of in this regard sir i feel uh, every person has freedom of speech and expression to express his idea his concerns and his understanding and he should be exempted from any proceedings based on this but the point of responsibility should be defined by the electoral system if a politician says something which harms or which affects the image of the country let the electorate decide the consequences for him this is what i think is ideal democracy so so you are not uh, in favor of any legal action being uh, taken or 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 uh, anything happened to his uh, membership of the parliament in my reading of this text uh, this doesn't become a case for any breach of privilege or expulsion of member because uh, until he does something which undermines the dignity of the parliament or cause an impediment in the working of the parliament he is not liable to be expelled from this thing what are the uh, constitutional provisions for uh, privilege of uh, parliamentarians 
if i recall right sir it's not mentioned in the uh, constitution the privileges are uh, are taken out of convention firstly taken from the british con uh, convention which was followed and later included in the constitution to say all those privileges which were prevalent at that time should be included they are not specified in the constitution all right okay uh, now you have some history with the railways also and uh, government is undertaking um, the project uh, a very massive project called the dedicated freight train corridor right yes sir what do you think are the benefits uh, in terms of uh, uh, specifically the social benefits of uh, of this uh, project in terms of dedicated freight corridor it separates freight and passenger trains so direct impact is it increases the frequency and timing of passenger trains so the communication and mobility of people increases very fast second the freight segment increases the trade reduces the logistic cost which is high in india and flourishes the industrial sector for example with dedicated freight corridor we have the scheme of dmic or the industrial corridor development so okay. with improvement in economy there are spill over effects for example improved tax collection leads to investment in health and education so all the social demography of the country improves these are the things i will i think okay. now 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 uh, very recently um, a report was uh, released uh, called the happiness index and india was uh, unfortunately ranked even below ukraine <clears throat> or even economically um, countries facing uh, facing economic hardships like pakistan and uh, sri lanka right what do you think are the reasons that india can't uh, fare up high in in such indices sir i like to categorize my answer this time into two there are first part i like to say there are actually reasons which exist in our system for example high amount of corruption uh, lack of for example india performs poorly in hunger index also so if we don't provide basic amenities like food and other resources certainly the happiness level will be low increasing pollution impact environmental impact certainly impacts happiness this is the first part but in second part i'm not uh, very uh, i don't think the happiness index is very rational in itself because today only i was reading that the topmost country finland sweden which tops the happiness index are the biggest consumer of antidepressant drugs now certainly these two are very contradictory fact uh, because what happens is they associate happiness with material happiness the index it takes the account like having access to basic resources social support etc etc but no way talks about the bone homey which a society has the cultural value which has so i think india fares fairly good in these aspect we have a very strong family bond society bond and a culture which we cherish and are happy about but it is no more in the list so okay okay uh, thank you ajay i'll pass on to the next member thank you so much sir hello ajay hello sir ajay can you tell us what do you understand from judicial autonomy sir so judicial autonomy is an independence of the organ of judiciary to deliver its judgment without getting affected by other organs of state and public sentiment and at the same time remain responsible to the constitution of the country but that is independence also how is autonomy different from independence uh, very sorry sir i cannot distinguish between two terms i used to think they are same no no problem, no problem are you aware about global security initiative yes sir uh, it is an initiative sir taken by china and it is touted as a counter to the cod initiative of us and it aims to include like minded countries in uh, countering this call uh, what are the final elements of it very sorry sir i don't know much depth about it more than this do you think uh, okay all right you don't know. no problem can you think of some hurdles uh, that we can face while achieving the goals of panchamrit climate panchamrit yes sir yes sir uh sir in achieving the goals first india has developmental needs which comes first and our current technology is not so friendly with environment and what we have seen an outlook of developed countries they're not willing to lend in more finances they're not willing to lend in more technology and the mm -hmm. idea of uh, warsaw agreement or loss compensation for those countries who have not covered up is also getting neglected of late so i think this will be the biggest biggest impediment why do you say that idea of loss and damage is getting neglected it was agreed upon recently 
Yes, sir. Uh, sir, but what they have agreed about loss and damage is to create a Santiago network and to allow private uh, voluntary contribution to it. But what the original idea of loss and damage was, the actual people who are responsible for the situation, the countries should come up and provide finance and technologies for LDCs, for small island de developing states, which have no which have no responsibility in creating this problem and they are biggest at loss of this problem. So which is getting lost, I think. What other challenges in India face? Uh, apart from it, sir, the awareness and behavioral change will be the biggest transformation issue. Because even mm -hmm. with the requisite knowledge, if people continue to go with the older practices and reckless use of resources of nature, certainly mm -hmm no policy can compensate for it. This will be the other issues. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Allow me a moment to think more, sir. No problem. Please do. So third thing I can think of is uh, the lack of coordination between multiple agencies and mm -hmm. uh, lack of fourth I can think of is lack of quantifiability of environmental goods. For example, mm -hmm. until it is quantified and included, it won't be tendered to fifth. I think uh, the the contestation for land is an issue for India. India has a limited land, and so <coughs> going on forest rates comes at a cost of industries. So this will be another balancing act to be done. What about what about our welfare credentials? We have a lot of commitment towards elevating poverty and inequality, and the solar and wind might prove a hurdle to that. I think that. What is your opinion? As per sir, uh, in this I like to quote our Prime Minister's idea, which says we have to adopt a development path which is which has to be very different and more energy sustainable as compared to Western world. Okay. We should be able to cause social welfare with adoption of better technologies, which cause, for example, solar and renewable are one such example. If mm -hmm. we are able to tap in with the grid of solar, uh, we will certainly reduce the climate impact of high amount of CO2, which comes from thermal power plant and we will still achieve the electricity for our development. So I think both mm -hmm. can be opted. Okay. okay. Uh, Ajay, I see uh, there's a certain brazenness in criminals, as I observe, some impunity in offenders. What do you think is the reason for that? No, very sorry, I'm not able to understand because, the, the entry. Because issue. there are a plethora of laws there yeah. to act as restraint. However, the criminals and offenders act with impunity and brazenness. Why is the criminal justice system failing to stop these criminals and offenders? Because I feel, sir, more than the severity of the law, certainty of the law yes, is uh, is the need of the hour. And yes. currently, when we see an implementation, uh, there is some discrepancy. For example, lack of modern technologies reduces the amount of evidences against criminals. Lack of witness protection reduces the availability of witness. Judicial pendency of high number of cases makes it uh, a non-ending task to bring a criminal to trial. These are the things which I think reduces the certainty and hence even the severity cannot deter the crime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you a situational question. Yes. Sir. Uh, you know that Aurangzeb succeeded Shah Jahan. Yes, sir. But uh, are you aware that Aurangzeb was not the uh, first choice of Shah Jahan? Yes, sir. Who was who? What was the first choice? Uh, Dara Shikon, sir. What would have happened had the situation of India any different had Dara Shiko succeeded? There, there are endless possibilities. Uh, uh, the horses of imagination can run anywhere. But I feel Dara Shiko has few elements which would have changed the course. First, mm. he was more secular and he was inspired by the ideas of uh, likes of Akbar, not a uh, radical like Aurangzeb. So maybe mm. uh, resentment of Marathas and Rajput mm. states wouldn't have been or six state wouldn't have been there. So mm. there could have been more cohesion in the country. Uh, mm. And if the success of Dara Shikoh would have followed the same line, maybe mm. say a colonial power like British would never would have been able to enter India. So mm. these are all the possibilities sir, which could have Good. happened or maybe not. Uh, so Ajay, I was looking at your dev and you have been a literary secretary and also editor. Yes, but in your hobbies, you have not mentioned reading books. You don't like to read books. Uh, sir, uh, the academic books have taken most all of my time. I'm busy <laughs> reading for this. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't okay. get time for a right. Okay. So Ajay, my last question to you is about asymmetric federalism. What do you understand yes. from it? And how is it helpful for India in Indian context? Yes, 
सर एसोमेट्रिक फेडरलिज्म इज दैट एवरी यूनिट इज फेडरल ऑफ अ फेडरेशन दो इंडिया इज नॉट अ फेडरेशन बट एवरी यूनिट ऑफ अ स्टेट इज नॉट ट्रीटेड इक्वली बट रादर बेस्ड ऑन देयर कैपेसिटी दे आर टेकन इनटू केयर फॉर एग्जांपल वी कैन टेक द एग्जांपल ऑफ फाइनेंस कमीशन डेवोल्यूशन इट डजंट डिवॉल्व इक्वल फंड्स टू ऑल स्टेट बट इट टेक्स इनटू पैरामीटर्स फॉर एग्जांपल अ स्टेट इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट व्हिच हैज मोर फॉरेस्ट नीड्स fund for conservation of it so we mm-hmm. give it more fund in terms of conservation a state like uttar pradesh with a larger population gets fund for it a state of tamil nadu would get fund because of its better population control measure so i think a fed a idea which caters to these differences is asymmetric federalism and it has very significant implication for india because in india the union is indestructible but states are mm-hmm. destructible and they have different identities different culture different geography different challenges so all, and different ideas of integration into india if you look at northern east northeastern state so mm-hmm. i think asymmetric federalism is one uniting force which keeps us together and yet allows our diversities to flourish okay thank you ajay now i'll pass on to the honorable thank chair you. thank you so much sir so apparently the overall performance or overall awareness the way you talk and communicate and answer i think this is very very desirable and this will really take you uh, give you good marks so from my side best of luck to you best of luck to you you want to see you in the list okay yes.